Hello, everyone. This is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and I am the host of Radio Entrepreneurs. And uh, this is our social distancing show. And uh, we have been now airing uh, all our shows via Zoom. And you can find us on RadioEntrepreneurs.com, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on all our sites. Uh, Nathan Gobes can add any information on that if he wants. Our next guest is uh, Phil Sharkey, president of the Higher Authority. Welcome, Phil. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here remotely, and, uh, and I look forward to uh, having this interview with you. Well, this may be the best time I've ever had with you, so. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, well, we, uh, so Phil, you know, I know you're still working in this economy. Why don't we tell a little bit <coughs> to our listeners what you're doing and how you've adapted to this economy? Yeah, yeah Jeff, um, you know, some things can continue. Pre-employment screening, we have a lot of clients that are still open, still functioning. Sure, many have closed or in a partial shutdown, but there's so much hiring going on in certain industries, such in retail, uh, supermarkets, of course, the medical. So we are, are clear to be working and up and running. Uh, we've trimmed staff. We also have people working remotely, but uh, currently we're social distancing in the office, separate offices, but background screening must continue. If under, more than important than ever right now, remote access employees are a huge risk for, for companies. And I think, uh, Jeff, in these times of stress and entrepreneurs move quickly and they sort of let their guard down. And what I've seen many times in the past, we'll go through some tragedy and we'll come out of it, which we surely hopefully will in, in this situation. And then people are already in place. So the mistakes of today will become the mistakes of tomorrow and down the line. And it can simply ruin a, a small to mid-sized company and even a large company. Well, I agree with that. When you let people go, you furlough them. Uh you know, you're, you're running a risk of not having staff. And before this crash, you know, staff, uh, not just recruiting and retention was probably the biggest issue I was seeing, you know, day to day as a management consultant. But some of my clients who were really being aggressive, let's say they're chasing 50% uh, of what they were chasing a month ago, uh, they have really tried to ramp up in sales. Now you do a lot of work in sales recruiting. And I would think this is a time to really be looking at not just your the right sales, but first sales strategy, go to market strategy, and then who are the right people? And there are people who want to sell right now. Absolutely. And, and again, the security aspect, which is really my focus is, you know, the people come in, you judge whether they can handle the work and do the, 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 the necessary school, uh, tools for the job. My job is to make sure they're a secure person as much as the extent of the law and background screening can. And again, we do see 30% turnout frauds. And so now is not the time to get lax and, and letting your, your betting down, you must be more diligent than ever. In fact, I have a, a recent story here, Jeff, that I, I circulated, and it was about a woman working remotely. And the article was that uh, uh, this was a company, it was a trade organization. She was the assistant executive assistant for the vice president of the company, and she worked remotely. And uh, she was always time stamping her work, and everything seemed to be great, it seemed to be very busy. And then one day, this gentleman said he had a flex day, and he went out to the local grocery store, and then he saw her working as the cashier while she was working for the company. So she even had a laptop or something with her. And it's not just the theft of time and, and, and such and being fraudulent. It's that- oh, That's dead beat. <laughs> yeah, they're so tricky. You know, that's, that's what always amazes me in, in the cases that really get me juiced up is that they're so conniving that they're not just fraudulent and performing illegal acts and, and stealing from you. They're so shifty. They're smarter than you are. And they're gonna, they're gonna show that they're smarter than you are. You know, I like that you say juiced up because I can think of the times when I've sort of boiled over, a la, uh, you know, 1960s, 70s cartoons, when I really feel everything in my body turn red. Yes. And that's when I've caught somebody in an act of a lie, you know, living a lie, per uh, perpetuating a lie, which is really what you're saying. And where we're, where we're now managing workforces virtually, it becomes that much more important to screen your people but manage your people appropriately and hold them accountable. That whole system of management becomes that much more important. It's so, it's so true. And again, when they're working remotely like this, they have access. You can't see them. You can't physically be in the same room with them, but they have access. They, <clears throat> they're representing your company, but they also have access to systems. And then remotely, are they working on a home computer? Is that secure? Can uh, uh, ID hackers get into their computer? Is it a company computer, company equipment? So again, what I'm talking about is the 30% that we see in the background checks, not the people that make a mistake or let their guard down, but the people that actively are out to do harm to your company, steal your product, your ideas, or just steal from you. 
And there's 30%, it's a huge number. And I don't think people really grasp that. And this is always 30% from people that we have a signed release on that we do a background check on. I currently have a case, Jeff, that I'm working on for one of my clients. It was a, a landlord situation of a big property, the property manager. And now they had just arrested the person based on information that we received of $60,000 in, in theft from, from rent checks that they were collecting and not putting into Needham Bank as they claim. So this happens. It's not far-fetched story. It happens to the tune of 30% of uh, six to 800 backgrounds we do monthly. So it, it's, 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 it's just the numbers. I just want to bring up another thing that's kind of tough. And I know you say 30% and I think that's good. I sort of look at it like a, uh, you know, one of those things my mother used to use in cooking, you know, when you, you put it through into the, the sifters, yeah. you know, what gets through and what doesn't get through. Uh, just recently I heard a story about a service company that they passed a background check but the person was still a bad dude. And a lot of the really bad dudes, the 1% will call them, the yeah. really bad dudes, um, they know how to uh, build a system where they're not being caught by traditional things. Now, this person was on the dark web. So how do you, how do you tell an employer to protect from that? And there, that's really ramping up your, your potentially problem employee. It's a great point. I, I wish I could have you on my marketing trails to, to point these out as well. I currently have a case right now for a computer company. It's the exact same story. And it's a year of birth that ended in 82, long list of criminal records. It's that 1% you spoke about, 10 pages of criminal records out of uh, Rhode Island. And he claims that his date of birth is 88. Now there's certain things we make the employer request a copy of their driver's license. Of course, he didn't have one. He had an ID that had to be, there was some mistake. How about a birth certificate? He provided one. What we found out was, this is the, the length they'll go to. He whited out the year, just the last number, replaced the eight with a two. But in his trickery, he doesn't see that the number was just slightly different all the way through the document. And of course, when you white out original document, the original document looked quite falsified. But it's those links that people will go, those one percenters. You're right. The other 29% of the background checks are more things that we can discuss back and forth. A false degree, didn't do the job they claimed. But the one percent of people that can cause great harm really go to that extreme length. In that regard, we, we made them show the documentation. And the onus then goes on the person to prove it's not him with the 10 page criminal record. <clears throat> which there's, the, there's the, well, we'll call it the 69%, the 30% and, and the 1%. And it's really, you're protecting that 69% who you still might not be hiring the right ones all the time that you're right. protecting from that 30 or 31%. Exactly. It's, you're it's about maintaining culture. It is, and your strainer example is perfectly uh, accurate where, you know, some things will get through, but those one percenters, they will not get through. And if it's not the criminal record, every time I've had someone with major activities like that, they, they fall apart in every area. Usually the education doesn't check out. Usually the driving record history, which people go, why driving? It's a great indicator. That is a disaster. The employment doesn't check out. In his case, he had a social, which we really got him, which was issued in 1983. So when he says he was born in 1988, that didn't fly. So that alone was our one concrete thing where he kept arguing that he was born in 1988, yet the social he had issued from our, uh, our country was issued prior to him being born. So that's where we really got him. So in this economy, uh, are you having to adjust the way you uh, contract with employees, uh, with con uh, clients as well? And are Absolutely. you working faster too? I would say, but it's both contract and speed of go to market. It is. And in my game, it's always speed. I never had a client who ever told me, take as long as you want. I got whenever, you know, it's, it's, it's always, you know, I'm going to lose this guy. I need a position, Phil. We guarantee a two to three day turnaround time, which most screening companies would never venture out onto that limb. And we meet those guidelines. Now, as you mentioned, Jeff, it's even more uh, critical than ever. The one problem in, in our society today, I can do most of my work, but things are shut down. Courthouses are shut down. So I can't get that criminal quickly. Massachusetts, for example, they've shut the entire court system down now, except for emergencies. They do allow me, because of my connections, to go in one day a week into my court and to do my criminal search, which compared to three or four times a week. But we're dealing with issues that have never been brought before in trying to survive. And what we found is that we can still do our work. Some of the checks are not timely, and it's, it's, it's the situation not the screening firm. And I guess you can't go online and access those files because they're so confidential? Correct, and there is some uh, misnomers where online, there's, there's a need for online, you can get some stuff, but you really can't get the good stuff. You can't get the real dockets and the cases unless you physically get into the court. And that's what I want when I go after someone, when I do a thorough background check, 
I need to get concrete evidence so that I don't harm them mistakenly without fact. And uh, we don't want any of those issues. So we always get exact date of birth, social address history. And then I know we, we got our man, so to speak. It, it makes me feel, feel secure in that. And, and I do just want to sh- uh, point out to our research here, this was a survey, Jeff, from OpenVPN and found out that one in three organizations, 36% have dealt with a security incident due to a fraudulent or unsecured remote worker. So again, getting to the point of today where everyone's going to be remote, this falls right into our numbers of the regular background checks where this uh, survey found that 36% uh, of employers have had an issue with a fraudulent or unsecured remote worker. I so, would uh, I would probably think that those statistics are conservative. I, I would agree. And even if it is locked in at the 36%, I, you, you work so hard as an entrepreneur to keep your business going and to do a background check for a, a, a low fee to make sure that you covered all your bases seems like a no brainer. Now, our listeners might not know that, you know, uh, our producers are uh, listening to the show there as they're, as we're being interviewed, Chris Gerald and Nathan Gobes. My assumption is that right now, Chris Gerald is drinking uh, Gatorade and, tw- and eating Twinkies. So we don't, you know, we don't know what they're doing right now. <laughs> exactly. Probably sitting there in his, uh, his pajamas and, uh, uh, you know. Well, he used to go to work in his pajamas when we weren't virtual. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen him, and I and I can back up your your, your statements there. So uh, you know, more than ever, I think that this whole security check is is important because we actually cannot prosecute the way we could have before for bad employees. We can't see them and fire them as easily. So screening them up front becomes more important than ever before. So do me a favor, tell our listeners how they can find you. Absolutely, and and you're so right, Jeff. And more than ever now, it's a virtual handshake. We with social distancing, we can't handshake. So if you're going to trust someone just by a nice smile and a and a good profile, then then it's just not going to work. We're on the web at www.hireauth.com. That's H-I-R-E-A-U-T-H.com, short for higher authority. Our offices are opening. You will get a person when you call, 508-230-5901. We're, we're available. That's always been our strength and what has separated us from our competitors is you always get uh, us still here. We're able to remain uh, operational. And I think more than ever, and it's not a pitch, it's not a sales for my business, it's really important for companies to vet the people now and make sure that you survive the current crisis, but then you have uh, people in place that aren't going to kill you in the long run. Perfect. And we're going to be speaking to you quite frequently during this uh, new economy. We've been speaking with Phil Sharkey, again, president of the Higher Authority. My name is Jeffrey Davis of Mage, M-A-G-E, if those who didn't know it, also host of Radio Entrepreneurs. And uh, we're going to take a break. Phil, great seeing you. Virtual hug. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you next time on Radio Entrepreneurs.